Hello. Hi guys, so it took a few minutes to get live. a little bit so we can get into stream. Let me do a sound test. Alright, how how is this? Let's see. Howdy, howdy. All sound good for everybody? Music, mic. Or whoever's here. Okay, we got two people in chat so far. I'll wait a little. You guys will get a chance. There was something I wanted to change and I don't remember. Probably gonna continue with slides upgrades today. Next, I wanna cover the snipers after snap and slide. Or do whatever. <laughs> I got one person in chat at the moment. I'm waiting for some more. started on this. I still don't have any good ideas for these 
for radiating coolant and heat seeking. Ooh, wait, actually I do have the idea for heat seeking. <laughs> no, I don't know where everybody is. Oh, says so we got three people in here now. It's because I didn't announce it the day, the day before. I didn't announce it two hours before. So I guess it caught people off guard. I wasn't even sure if I was going to stream today. I wasn't feeling so good yesterday. down to one person. Well, everybody left. What the heck? So rude. Alright. So I do have an idea for a heat sink and right now all it does is uh, make it easier to use blue blazes. It makes... You know how your cursor kind of has me on the enemy for blue blazes? to home in onto that person. Although it's only a huge area that it gives you. I don't, I can't imagine like needing a bigger area. It makes it bigger. It's extremely useless. So what if, That's kind of what I got going here, except I want it to be even more unique, so how about we just make it so, like, it has a condition for activating it, so you have to use blue blazes in a unique way. somebody on fire first probably for your ranged attack and then send a super deadly blue blaze at them. I think it'd be kind of balanced because they do have reaction time because well they're fighting you or they're getting shot at by you so they're gonna see you using the ability anyway. Honestly, I think it's even at two points, it's not gonna be amazing. Because remember, you have to actually activate a condition first. It's 50 extra damage, but if you're gonna hit them with a fireball anyways and they're on fire, they're gonna be a bit lower health regardless. That 50 extra damage is not gonna make a difference on like 125 health or lower characters. Because when they're burned, they're gonna already have some chip on them. And most of the time, if the, the enemies are burned, you're beating them up pretty good anyways. So it, it's more of a unique playstyle trait. And they still get plenty of time to react. Like you know how blue blazes has that has a bit of a startup. If you're in a fight and you use that, that can be a bit risky. So I think the payoff is fine. Well, it wouldn't be that hard to avoid considering, well, if they, if they, they're already going to see it coming, basically. Like, compared to a normal blue blazes, you can just fire that with this. If you want the added benefits, you have to already be hitting the enemy, and then they already see it, and now they're already focused on you. So, once you're doing the animation for starting up blue blazes... They'll be able to react to that.
That's my thoughts on the matter, at least. It could be unbalanced, we don't know. Personally, I think it's fine. It's just... It, it's, I think it's fine because of the condition to activate it. And... In that condition... To, for the, When that condition is active... The situation is going to be totally different from a normal blue basis usage. Yeah, I can't wait either. <laughs> That's going to be one nightmare to balance. It's the same. Howdy. We got five people in here now. That's nice. So, this is something I made in the... This change right here is something I made in the previous video, but I'm not sure if I want to keep it. Hmm. I mean, maybe. It's still a pretty good range, I'd say. Oh, you know what I should do? Maybe instead of doing this, decrease the projectile hitbox so it takes a bit more aim and skill to use. Howdy, howdy. Could also make the projectiles a bit slower. Say it's a lead your shots a bit the farther they are away. Yeah, I think. does have a lot of DPS. All oh, right. Uh, I didn't touch blue blazers. Yeah. Only some, yeah, I don't think I'm doing anything to blue blazers. I was considering making it slower, so it's more of like home and ball, where the enemies are just kind of forced to run away. I still might do that. 
Because Snapdragon's a control character. He's just supposed to break up the enemies and mess them all up. And forcing an enemy to constantly run from blue blazes would achieve that. But I don't know if it'd be effective if it was slow. Maybe just a little bit. No, I do not think fire damage should not. I don't think fire damage kill. That was like the single worst thing in GW2, I believe. It's just like, it's just slow and annoying way to die. It feels like you just got cheesed out of a fight. It's just not fun. I think fire should be able to be cleverly used where you can light on somebody on fire and let them get crippled to low health and then you can finish them off. Or force them to hide just with a bit of damage because of the fire damage. That fits his control character playstyle. That would just make him really just focus on getting kills and just massacre. And I don't think he should be that kind of character. He's literally designed for clothes for control. This fire damage is a lot more interesting and a lot more obnox and a lot less obnoxious. Even at the higher damage, nobody in GW2 liked dealing with fire damage. And that fire damage his portal came up, it was agony. It's just annoying. Especially when you're a low health character. It's a really unfair advantage for lower health characters. Fifteen is basically no health. Honestly. I, I really don't think the fire damage needs changes. If anything, it's really freaking good. Yeah, I think Blazing Trail, being able to see through it as a plant would be nice. There are a lot of visibility issues like with Dummy Shield too, and Phaeton Shield blocking your view. Especially Dummy Shield. See, okay, with Flare Ball here, Snapdragon's not a sniper, but he can kind of snipe currently because 35 freaking damage. It's a lot. You should take note that Flare Ball like instantly ignites an enemy. So what Flare Ball is supposed to be, as it says here, he, uh, they're more of a weak finisher or a tool for pressure and enemy, distant enemies from, with fire damage. So. You just control the enemies by making them on fire and now they're forced to take cover. It cripples their region.
he doesn't tank, is the thing. Yeah, he's kind of a defensive offense character. I mean, you can be both. <laughs> but he has so much damage that you can just play aggressively with him too. His uh, control and abilities excels more so on like attack and defense at times. Blocking off the enemies from making it back to point to defend. Forcing the enemies to hide behind cover rather than defending the point. Locking off entrances that the enemies can use to try to protect that point. All sorts of stuff. He's a crowd. Crowd controls excels in that offensive thing. And seriously, this damage is nuts. Oh, radiate, radiates get in some changes to be more interesting. All it does right now is like you got bigger splash. Ooh. Yeah, but they don't function the same at all. Like engineer's gun is extremely unique. Flare ball is just kind of projectile with splash and a bit of art really fast too for a custom character though. if anything I'd compare it to like Yeti Chomper but on like steroids Fire does that. I don't. I kind of want to avoid direct damage buffs. Maybe on a, his secondary weapon, it's fine because it's just a flare ball. It's a minor weapon. I do kind of want to have it focused on flare ball, just so that for people who like using flare ball, you know, different. I also don't. I've never really liked the ammo based upgrades. They don't change your playstyle. What, what, what we're kind of going for with these upgrades is not just like it's a buff to the character. We're trying to completely change their playstyle. The. We, we are looking for a huge variety. We're getting rid of all four cost upgrades, by the way, making them three cost. Nerfing them accordingly, of course. No five cost. Even the legendary upgrades will be three cost, so you can have more variety with your sets. Like, look at these upgrades and how. Upon using any ability, you get a speed boost. And it does the regular effect it does. That's a total change for your playstyle. Campfire, that's super unique. Incendiary. That too. And it still has its previous effect. This is huge. You get a speed boost by touching fire. You can combine that with campfire. You can shoot a fire pillar at the ground. And you can run through it and get the speed boost. Kind of, well, then he's just a uh, no skill character if you make him have m wider projectiles. I want, I, I know that's what he does in PvZ2, but this isn't PvZ2. It, it'd be hard to like transfer it to this because then he just becomes like, well, a no skill character. We want him to be, have a good skill cap be, and be very interesting to play. A respectable character that, ha like, it's, pick, it's able to be picked up with beginners, but pros can take it to the next level because it does require aim if we nerf things projectiles. He yeah, had the backdraft with campfires. That would be so fun. That's actually an interesting idea. Uh, another thing we're leaning away from is on kill effects. 
like uh because those are situational those don't help in one-on-one -on -one situations at all it's just kind of you beat up a noob and now you can beat up somebody that's better than you because you have some sort of advantage like we might have a few of those but they don't affect your playstyle as much like oh yeah when you get a kill you get more damage or something like that or a faster fire rate it's not gonna make you play very different it's just kind of a kill hogging thing when you beat up a bunch of people I want to kind of add traits, but the kind of deal damage and you get a buff thing, I, I do like that idea. I don't know if I would say he's a soldier clone, but he's supposed to be the soldier counterpart, not pea shooter. I wouldn't say Peacher is super jack of all trades like Soldier is. Corn's more of an like a mid-range fighter where he supports the scene with Butterbeak and it does a lot of area damage. Soldier doesn't have the crowd control that Corn has. Corn has just can just mess up entire teams with proper support. He's a very team-centric character. Butterbeacon's like one of my favorite abilities in the game. It's such a great concept. Allowing him to support his allies with it. Very unique ability too, because it also buffs your damage. Shuck Shot is exceptional crowd control. And Huskop is Huskop. It does a lot of things. That's also an interesting concept. Maybe if you hit an enemy with Flare Ball, it highlights them. For your whole team. That could be an interesting, give them a support characteristic. I do like adding a support upgrade for every character. Makes them a lot more interesting. Yeah, I think I could go with that. seconds should be fun. Yeah, party time is a bit weak. Honestly, I'd go for more of the rework kind of thing. I've never liked the concept of party characters because it, it's like the kill reward thing, but like on steroids. And it's a bit of a luck based thing. Like if you're lucky, you can get five free kills from like low health guys or imps or bad players. And then you could just beat up the better players because you got lucky. Never been a fan of things like that. I, I'm more of directly affecting your playstyle like all time. got some synergy going on too a lot of synergetic upgrades with these fire pillars and stuff hmm. the only thing i really would need is cool and i i can always come back and change stuff oh, i didn't okay 
kind of want to do... I kind of wish Funky Bouncer did a bit more, but I don't know what. So funky bouncer, that's actually a cool idea. You can kick the button again and it'll stop funky bouncer. That adds some more complexity to use it. Wait, what? What's the ability disabling thing? could do that and it's just slight as the other control character she's the counterpart to snapdragon but more focused on mid-range and keeping her distance from the enemies all all her upgrades i mean all her abilities will be designed to help her or focus on that keeping a little bit of distance from the enemies at a mid-range like disco tornado you have to be at mid-range for it to work now and now the fight helps you quickly get to mid-range or get some distance from enemies. And same for Funky Bouncer. Funky Bouncer and out of fight would be like opposite tier. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, I don't think... I think if it disabled abilities would be too annoying. I don't want Funky Bouncer to be a super annoying ability. We have to have a balance of fun, annoying, and effective. And balance. And integrating the playstyle. There's a lot of factors to consider here. Yeah. Disco Tornado is just kind of... You use it, you get some damage in a fight. It's never been used as the more crowd controlling. But... Now it can just shut down a huge area. But only at mid-range. So it's not going to be useful in 1v1s as much. Although it can be if you know what you're doing. So she launched enemies into it with Funky Bouncer to get some extra damage. Or shutting down areas, preventing the enemies from pushing you. But that will give her some area then. It's kind of like, uh... What's it called? Fire, uh, Blazing Trail, but circular instead of a line. Yeah, I think I'll do the... You can... You can now cancel it. I think that's a really cool idea. Yeah, I heard D DPS is alright. It's not supposed to be particularly high, it's just kind of the average, as it should be. Wrong button again. Don't worry, I got this. I got this, guys. Just don't make fun of me.
I think the current roles that the characters are in are fine. Yes, I think Engineer should be in support. He is, has all his abilities support his allies. He's a defensive support. But support first, defensive second. We're gonna rework Engineer to be more supportive and less offensive. But, yeah. Alrighty. format the one above all oh, right I don't think engineer is a counterpart to Rose and yeah acorn and space cannot do the swarmy swarmy thing but it also tanks at the same time, so it's interesting. Uh, I'm actually working on a loadout with conduction. It's actually not a useless upgrade. I figured out a really cool way to use it, which you guys will see whenever I uh, make that video in like a year. <laughs> not a year, but uh, in a few weeks. Whenever I feel like it, you know? I figured out how to use it to get like this container back instantly. Amplification is just kind of lame. Alright, well, uh, let's go ahead and just kind of get the upgrades jotted down. By the way, yes, I do intend to give defibrillated some support functionality. Make happens. Conduction uh, makes it so when you grab, when you catch an enemy in your funky bouncer, it shortens this tornado's cooldown a bit. I don't know, but I think it is. I don't know, I never used that since I don't know why you'd even use it. It's a full cost upgrade that does not a whole lot. Uh, defibrillated, yeah, we're gonna nerf that thing. We're gonna make it a three cost. We're gonna make it less you get back to full health and maybe you get a little bit of health out of it, but I kinda wanna throw in some support functionality. It's literally called defibrillated. Doctors use that. They use defibrillators.
has two L's, okay. And the last one is... Wait. No, Maelstrom is a... Oh, this part of the song is good. Maelstrom's a out of fight upgrade. I think both should have some changes. Epiphany should have support then. Yeah, I think if every kid had one support upgrade, that'd be so cool. That's just more unique playstyles you can have for it. I think Epiphany should maybe heal allies a little bit while they're instead of Archie and Mingba. And while you're healing allies, you do get healed yourself. I think the Fibrillated... Hmm. Okay, so... Something to take note. Uh, before we get into the out of fight upgrades, we do need to look at the changes we made. Out of fight is super fucking fast now. It does double the sprint speed, which I believe is one, uh, three times the walking speed. Like, sprinting is 1.5 times, so this would be like three times. But it only lasts a second and a half, so it's super. You zoom out the way and stuff. It would be really cool. Yeah, I think a pippin should have I was thinking maybe Defib could have something with revives. What if you could like... Hmm. Revive people while you're inside of Out of Fight. Which might be fair because of the 1.5 second duration. So for the note is that we're also going to change uh, Enigma to have health. Like, it'll have, like, Arcane Enigma will have, like, 250 health, something of 200. So you can knock the rose out of Arcane Enigma by damaging it. Now Shom's gonna probably have to work a little differently due to the 1.5 second duration of out of fight. Maybe. I would love to own BF then. I would, I would do some really cool stuff to this game. Uh, go ahead, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking for Epiphany. So. Maybe. That'd be interesting. That'd also be. It might be too strong. With Maelstrom, it's already an amazing upgrade, but we're gonna have to tweak it a little due to the fact that we're changing Disco Tornado and Out of Fight. Now, while you're inside of Out of Fight, Disco Tornado, you're, I mean, while you're inside of Disco Tornado, your Out of Fight can last up to three seconds long. And, uh, out, you take note, Disco Tornado is twice as big and lasts twice as long. The Out of Fight, the Maelstrom effect, though, would be the same. So you're like a 
you basically mm -hmm. become a tiny disco tornado inside of a bigger disco tornado. Which is really cool. You can like choose where you want the extra damage to be. And with the faster movement speed of out of fight, that would just be that would be such a cool play style. And Dfib definitely has to use something with healing because that's uh, what it is as a doctor tool. It really feels like something to do, it should do with revives because it's kind of what the fibula, the fib, the, those thingies are used for. It. Defibrillator. Such a weird word. <laughs> Who decided to name the object a defibrillator? Yeah, I'm going to defib you. Remove your fibs. No more fibs allowed. I think Malsham is fine. Malsham doesn't need a support quality. It's offensive. Defib will be the supportive one. Here's an idea. Oh, why did my music stop? Well, see that the whole point of this casino is dealing damage is the problem. Like rewind and fallback plan work as upgrades because those abilities have usages other than damage. Rewind gives you a lot of mobility with sap trap. And fallback plan gives you a lot more mobility with jump dump. But uh this tornado's sole purpose is damage. Maybe cooling sparks could uh, build up the ice effect on somebody when they're inside a disco tornado. Like it doesn't like it. You know how in BFN they don't have the full freeze effect because God that was obnoxious. It just slows your tongue. That's what this could do. Every damage check will build up towards that ice effect. So you have cold electricity, and that's pretty cool, I think. There you go. I don't know anything about Ice Glass personally, and I haven't played her, so balancing a character that doesn't exist would be a bit tricky. Maybe we can try that eventually. As the last thing, I'd have to do research. I. Yeah. I think that would be kind of cool though. Uh, 
Uh, I don't personally have any problems with heretical. Maybe it, I, I haven't even noticed that it was like different or anything. <laughs> Guess I just don't pay attention to that stuff. Defense characters because snipers are you in like a lot of class A shooters. Snipers are kind of classified as a defensive character because they don't play very aggressively. They stick back, and sticking back is a thing you do when defending a point. You gotta stick on point, you don't have to take any areas. So that's why they're considered a defense character. I think conduction should affect how to fight as well. Oh. What do you guys think about this? Blowing enemies away does seem a bit disadvantageous though, so maybe not. How about... Nah, I'll, I'll leave... To differentiate between Corn and Sparks and Turbulence's usage, I'll give like Turbulence some utility, while Corn and Sparks is more about trapping inside, so... I don't think chain lightning is bad, but it's not very interesting. Chain lightning and jumper cables. We're gonna make them do some cool stuff. We're gonna get some funky ideas to them. I was gonna make turbulence suck in plants, but then that's kind of doing the same job that cool and sparks would be doing, where it slows down enemies to keep them in more. So I think they're gonna have totally different usages. We don't want two upgrades that do the same job, per se. 
kind of like jumper cables and chain lock. It's just both focus on, yeah, arc damage is better, I guess. You don't play any different with them either. So. I don't remember what the cost of some of these upgrades are off the top of my head, so I'm... These things are going to be subject to change right away. All of these things right now are subject to change. I may come back a different day, and like, uh, I, I want to touch up on this idea. Thank you. I think we could do... Uh, you guys just saw my screen turn a bit orange. It's the night light functionality on my computer to protect my innocent eyes. It's so gentle and sweet. <laughs> Why did we make jumper cables make you jump? <laughs> That'd be interesting. Fighting a slide, it uses out of fight, it has to fibrillate it. You're now in phase two. <laughs> hmm. Alright. I think if Jumper Cable said something with jumping, though, that'd be kind of fun. You gotta do the pine. It's a pine. Why would we never do a pine? I love pines. Uh, that would be strange. Toxic. <laughs> I don't want to make an obnoxious character to fight now with the suffering, so how do we do this? Because I think that prevents hydraulics from making engineer noises. He has to sprint while doing it. And maybe just while she sprints and she just jumps higher too. It's like hydraulics. You just moon jump. <laughs> so you can get the high ground with this, or do all sorts of crazy shenanigans. We just boing into the air. Is it a two cost or is it a three cost? I know one of these two are three cost, I think. Something 
that are changed Interesting. She could glide? Huh. Hmm. That'd be so weird, but that would be cool. Hmm. Give Slide a double jump. <laughs> God. Slide's already a really hard character to hit. She has a really strangely small hitbox. Glide it with me. I'll consider that. So that's actually kind of a cool idea. But she's just a unspectacular character currently. She uh, shoots, I guess. She has disc you know, That's could be an interesting ability, but you kind of you know, click a button and now you do damage. Ooh. And you be invincible for 12 years. That's fine. It's like Arcane Ningba, but even less interesting. No, Arcane Ningba. And Funky Bouncer is kind of... You throw it. And... We're mildly annoyed now. It doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah. It just isn't a whole lot going on for Slide, is the thing. Yeah, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> I've already been here for an hour and I still haven't started a new character. But it's fun. So, it's all worth it in the end. Two charges of Funky Bouncer might be a bit too obnoxious. Because then they use the ability to get the first one and then it's like, oh, it's just a second.
I already like what conduction does. I just think it needs to be a bit better at what it does. So that's the point of these changes. Amplification right now makes uh, funky bounce bigger. And we're gonna make it more amplify, you know. It needs to amplify something. What could it amplify? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I got an idea. <laughs> Mobility, everybody loves mobility. Or maybe just use and funky bouncer can give you a speed boost. And you can combine that with uh turbulence. Hold up. I think it'd be more. Okay, imagine, use amplification and uh, turbulence. You stack both of the speed boosts, and then you go and add a fight. Just, just think about it. Just think about that. You will leave the planet. You will go away. You know how fun that would be? You could just zoom. <laughs> I would love that so much. I'll be right back. I need to use the restroom. It should just take a minute or so. BRB. Alright, where were we? I think if it's upon usage, it should just be a room.
All right. We're getting some cool ideas up in here. So Slide's playstyle is still kind of mostly mid-range, except with Malshawn. That's more of a close-range one. We could have Jazz Hands and Malfunction be more close-range. And maybe Chain Lightning could be more for long-range. It's kind of for people who want to take her a bit more at a distance. Uh... Yeah, I'll just remove Brainia. That, that would be so much easier. I think there's something we could do with Brainium to make it fixed. It, it's too mobile, but it's fun. But I think we can kind of balance the fun and the mobility. Hmm. Maybe for Brainium, it still has the punches. What about that? It still has the punches, but you can charge up to use the dash instead of flying fits. It'd be a lot weaker though, Mo mostly focused on mobility. And there's no tap dash, which will... The removal of the tap into dash would be a good nerf to its mobility as well. And instead of having the shield, it has the uppercut. Yeah, Brainium is more toxic than OP. That is true. There are OP factors to it. I I used to just kind of kick Brainium ass, but the fact that one slip up in a fight with it just means instant death is kind of kind of a good idea. It needs a lot of changes though. It should not insta kill. That's dumb. Like, maybe it has the punches, and instead of having a flying fist, it has the charge tackle. So, you can charge up. So, and it, the whole first charge is completely gone. The second charge will have, like, the strength of the first charge. And the third charge will have the strength of the second charge. Maybe even less, honestly. And it has more, it's more distance than damage. Maybe charging up all the way doesn't even make it do extra damage. It just goes farther. While, uh... You could still have the uppercut in place of the shield. I don't think it'd be a bad idea. Yeah, uh, we're gonna make the legendary upgrades three cost, but we're gonna nerf them a lot to, like, balance it out. So their abilities, their ability of a legendary upgrade would be like other upgrades. And you can fit a lot more into the sets and whatnot. But they would be less of a huge buff or whatever. <laughs> Revive them. Yeah. Radiant isn't even useful with Brainium because you don't spread with Brainium. <laughs> I think having a dash attack as your primary though is a big problem. And having that dash attack be so accessible without even having to charge it means he's too mobile. He escapes way too easily. He gets around way too easily. He can uppercut it and fly out of any situation. Get into a jump though, to escape. And yeah. If we ha make it just so the his regular attack is still the punches, then that'd be fun. Make his dash attack damage a lot weaker. All, all his other attacks a lot weaker. Basically, he spends three points to trade out his shield and flying fist for some sort of other attack. To help with approach and mobility. So, brain, regular brains is more of a... He has the access to that range attack and his shield to give him a bit more versatility. Brainium loses out on that versatility for 
mobility. Hi, we are reworking upgrades and we're talking about potential reworks for Brainium. <laughs> Support Brainium would be fun. I don't know if I have the guts to show my face on, in an online match while using Brainium, but. <laughs> Uh, so the only upgrades we haven't reworked for slide is Chain Lightning, Malfunction, and Jazz It's gonna look pretty well compared to Snapdragon. <laughs> the next characters we're probably gonna be going to is Cactus and Deadbeard, by the way. I'm gonna go ahead and... Up. We'll do cactus first. Plant then zombie and plant then zombie. Let me just copy and paste some formatting. Why can Typhoon cancel Burrow? Typhoon is stupid. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to give Brain some sort of support upgrade. It's a shame they didn't give him any shield upgrades. Invincible while reloading. That could be exploited a lot. That, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, damage resistance might be a bit better. I have no idea, don't ask me. <laughs> I don't taunt people, so I wouldn't know. I have never, I, I never, ever taunt, even if somebody taunts me. Wait, that's not correct. That's not, supposed to be a comma. I love commas. I don't think there's really any changes to be done to Cactus, uh, other than upgrades. Yeah, she's fine. Right? Bull Barrage. Bull Barrage needs a bit of a nerf. It got... It's nice that they finally made it good, but, like, they, 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 they made it a bit too good. Yeah, I wish Spike Strike had some sort of upgrade too. No, Heavy Metal should be like Alacrity, because Heavy Metal was broken as shit. <laughs> Alacrity was like Heavy Metal at launch, and they got rid of that because it's like, yeah, that's a stupid idea. We should be using it for quick attack. 
And they didn't do the same thing for Heavy Metal for some reason. I guess they just forgot. My, it, it drops one. I'm gonna make Bon Voyage maybe give you a speed boost after using it. Kind of like Shore Leaf. I don't think every character has to have a counterpart. It, it's like a little bit of a counterpart. Maybe most characters do. I mean, I think Plants should definitely have a mech character like him. I think Zombies should have some stealth character. And Plants should have some team up character. So team up support like Wizard to balance it out a bit. But 80s doesn't need a, like a direct counterpart. Like the only, honestly, the only two characters that don't have a counterpart, besides Wizard, I'd say, and Nightcap and Imp. There's like Imp, Nightcap, Wizard, 80s, and Pea Shooter. They don't have counterparts. I personally don't consider Soldier to be Pea Shooter's counterpart. They're a bit, quite a bit different in playstyle. You know, that's a good question. Why isn't it called Bomb Voyage? That would have been a perfect pun. She drops the potato. You're a genius. All right, in the, in the notes here, we're gonna make it so Bomb Voyage is renamed to Bomb Voyage. <laughs> uh. Yeah, and GW2, they're more similar. Oh, especially in GW1. Yeah, GW2, they're quite similar. Didn't make much sense though. I actually was supposed to be a supportive character. Meanwhile, Engine is like the least popular character in GW2, and P Shooter is the most. Makes sense. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so yeah, Big Bull Barrage. Let me be real, I don't know the exact damage values of this thing. Popcorn's gonna get a rework. One, it has RNG, that's stupid. Two, it's a four cost, which is stupid. Three, it's an on-kill effect. And it doesn't change your playstyle at all, it's just kinda like, you know, you have an added bonus. You don't play any differently when you're using popcorn. Okay. Now, Big Bull Barrage. I think this thing has gotten a bit too strong. I wonder if we can find the exact damage values. specifics on the gutter giant all that wait oh wait it doesn't have the final update of course it doesn't have the final update why would it have the final update Ugh. Where's patch notes? Give me patch notes. I just want patch notes. That's all I ask for. Nope. Okay. You're useless. I'm 
doing my best. Here you go. Cactus. Okay, so... Jesus Christ, 21st Splash. So on a direct hit, it does 40 total. 45, sorry. So... Maybe that's fine. No, somebody already said it in the chat. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so... If we decrease the splash by 5, that also decreases the direct by 5. It shoots like 6 bulbs, so this means it cannot kill somebody with just splash now. A 125 health care turn. Then we would just make it like... Would that be too much of a nerf? Go down to 90 splash, which is still a lot, honestly. But it would, you would do. Why would I nerf tennis skills? It's honestly like one of the most. It's not really that useful of an upgrade compared to like all the all stars of the upgrade. Like, ooh, you can. That was like the w upgrade that people overreacted to the most when they first saw the patch notes. And now nobody even bothers with it too much. It's like you can jump while shooting, which is not that big of a deal. And you move faster, which is still not big of a deal. And while jumping, you lose a lot of accuracy. No, they should not one-shot the healers. That'd be real. That'd be so painful playing healer and just randomly dying to the snipers. So snipers are already like amazing characters, so they don't really need a buff. Yeah. Uh, Tennis skills is a bit on. Yeah, <laughs> there's a very good reason it doesn't do hundreds. say
calibrated is way too strong. It's just DPS boosting upgrades. I have a problem with DPS boosting. Things that kind of just let you do more damage to your primate tends to be the problematic upgrade. Everybody uses it because it's a DPS upgrade. A lot of our upgrades can be made a lot more interesting though. Like Luden is kind of boring. It's just an ammo upgrade. And the ammo upgrades are always the layman. Says she Acorn, who has three of them for some reason. I'm gonna be real, almost every upgrade in the game is gonna be touched up on. Cause I like making things really freaking cool. What can I say? Uh What there there is pressure point. Pressure point definitely needs some changes. It's not that useful. It's very situational. And doesn't change your playstyle, of course. That'd be interesting. Although, I think it should do more than just ammo. Like, what if you can... It's also an on-kill effect is another problem. Maybe damaging enemies with your, not your sniper, your uh, spike, spike, spiky thingy. Uh, uh, spike strike? I think your, 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 your unscoped weapon gives you ammo and health, maybe. Yeah, there should be no RNG in upgrades. I think most upgrades should have it. Oh, uh, my cat wants to be on it. I got a cat now. I think it'd be a lot cooler if all the upgrades added some change to your playstyle, though. There's just more variety and more fun. Okay, we're gonna have to, have to go. Oh, not, not. Not, not the tape, not, go. Oh, okay. I guess he's going on the table. Boom, sir. Alright. Hello. You are a cat. Uh, what's the other cat that's upgrade? I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting one. That isn't it. Hello, cat. Hmm. Ant and like mob car. Thing is, I'd just be so situational trying to use it if it was pure or It's already a bit situational on Corn himself, and he has rapid fire. Cactus has. An incredibly small projectile, similar to coin, but Van only shoots like one every few seconds. <gasps> Mirage, oh yeah, that's uh, that one needs some changes. It does nothing interesting at all. You wouldn't ever run this upgrade. It's just a little bit of a quality life upgrade. You're kind of putting yourself at a disadvantage by running this. I'll consider that definitely. Mirage just makes it so you know how when you zoom in, like part of your screen is a bunch of your screen is black, it makes it so less of the screen is black. Yeah, it does very little. <laughs> That would be interesting. Might be a bit strong though. And that would also make Spud Spot in a lot less useful. 
Maybe they move faster while scoped as well, kind of like buttered branches. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Mirage is for recorded memes. Potato upgrades are Spud Spodden. I like Spud Spodden a lot as a concept. It just needs to be a bit better at its job. So we'll probably increase the radius. Popcorn, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with that just yet. I think cactus is half, probably. Sustenance. And then we got, we got, we got, we got spotlight. Spotlight is gonna get a buff. I love spotlight, but it needs to do a bit more than just official. Calibre Luden's a really stupid set. It should not be like that. Not that I use it anyways. It's kind of cringe. I'm more aggressive with Cactus than just camping. I'm also going to rework Ranger too. Maybe make it so Ranger makes it so your projectiles are way faster as well. Nearly hit scan, that'd be cool. I don't think any of the common upgrades need nerfs, more off buffs. So, alacrity. And bon voyage. I think it should have a more direct effect on what you do, though, because I just kind of... It's still just a quality of life skill, if anything. It doesn't actually do anything <laughs> that will physically change the character. It just makes your life a little easier, I guess. Th thank you for this information. That is a that is a, that is an information. One information. I love one information. All right. Uh, spotlight. <laughs> I had it. I have an idea. I don't know if I want to do it, but uh. There is an there is a lot of need for it actually. I I love uh uh wards and information being conveyed. So what if Spotlight, which is the ultimate support drone, you can highlight enemies for your teammates? And you can revive people. Now, I don't know how useful Garlic Grown being able to revive would be. 
Yeah, that's 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 the thing I'm worried about. You can get some. It just sounds kind of pointless. Maybe we could just have that. We'll add another effect on top of that too. That's just an added bonus. This won't be a. You you can do this, but you don't have to, of course. It's just a free little bonus. So we should do we should do something else as well. I think we'll do a bit more than just reviving people. And we'll just kind of have that, you know... In the one... The rare situation where reviving with your drones is a good idea, you can do that. I feel like I should have some direct effect on enemies, maybe. This would be interesting. It's kind of like Corrupt. I don't know though, because with this... It's still hard to tell if you're actually doing something uh, helpful. That's why I kind of don't want to do this. I might do something else. Hmm. You, you don't know. That, that's the problem with trying to use Corrode is you don't even know if it's helping or not. It, it might be helping. Who knows? It's just, it does help. Right so, maybe not that. Hmm. Omen P. I'm gonna be real, Rough Patch is more useful than Omen P. <laughs> At least Rough Patch costs one point. You don't have to burn four points on garbage. Because Omen P's been nerfed into the ground, thank god, too. Uh, Rough Patch actually does go in certain sets that just have one point left over as just, you know, filler, and they already have Refresh and Revive. Like, Revive Cap has rough back. I did make a whole... It is a bit hard to see the benefit from Drive-By Head Rub, but I did make a whole video on it, and you can see the benefit in that. With Kuroi, it's, like, impossible to tell you actually benefit. <laughs> Holman P is like one of the most overrated things in PvC history. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a meme since launch for different reasons. It was stupid at launch, and that's why it was a meme. And now it's a meme because it's so bad that you'd have to be delusional to use it. I wanna, uh, let's. It's kind of got to fit with a spotlight beam. Mm. Yeah, I'd rather use success again. Mobility. No, Hero's Moment. Uh, it heals you. I have a loadout on it. You can hit a lot of people with it at once. And you get a lot of heals. And with a character like Brains, where you're gonna be up in their face, every little bit of health matters. Jump dump into a Recuperate Turbo Twister, and you have so much more health than a normal Brains would in that situation, basically. Oh wait, why don't we just make this a one cost? I did say I did want more one cost upgrades. We need to give Slider one cost upgrade. 
more one cost upgrades means your filler upgrade isn't gonna be the same every time. This thing has a minor enough effect that it could be a one cost. I don't think making it a one cost is gonna make it a spotlight OP, but. Oh, what did I do? Empiric isn't too bad. That's my that's an idea I had for explosive the Gatlin actually is make Gatlin do splash. I do need we can make one of these upgrades at one cost. We can make two upgrades at one cost. I think the more one cost upgrades, the better. That's more variety in the set. Like, wait, what if we made Malfunction a one cost, but get rid of the... Make it so it has, like, cooldown on it, basically, so you can't do the uh, taser slide, where you sprint and reload, do a bunch of damage. And maybe make the explosion a bit lower damage. Or, I don't know. And make it a one cost. Found his nightcap was OP. Today nightcap is ba pretty balanced. Yeah, technically today's nightcap does do more damage, although Feng Fu is not as strong, I believe. I don't think conduction for sides the worst. Yeah, Holman P is worse too. Conduction, I do have a. I, I said this earlier in the stream. I have a video I'm working on a set right now with conduction and I can use it to get disco tornado back in like three seconds after using it it's a pretty gimmicky set but when you pull it off it's pretty cool I have a clip of me get I, I use it and, and I use disco tornado and then I have disco tornado back three seconds later Conduction requires a It's a bit complex. You'll see when the video comes out in a few weeks or whatever I have if you like major it And have enough clips for it. It's a very difficult set to play though. You got to be smart when using this There's so many things you need to line up and you have to be in control of your situation and know how the situation's going So it's a higher skill set higher brain power set Yeah, I don't like to say upgrades are bad before trying them too much except ones that are like really obviously bad like mirage, <laughs> mirage. mirage and ice are also some of the worst upgrades they literally do nothing except you see a little more i guess yes i do have characters to be a fan i actually drew a picture of one now, when I make characters, I, uh, prefer to make completely original ideas. I don't like reusing ideas that have already been in PPC. I make my own puns. But this one's a bit of an exception. Bit of not, though, because I have a ton of puns in it anyways. But it's more of... I made it just to make up for the fact that this plant has not been done justice. It's a cattail concept. And I never liked cattail in the first PPC because, one... It doesn't look like, I don't like how it looks too much, like, why does it have, like, white fur? It should have, like, brown fur, kind of like the cattail plant it's based on. That would have made more sense. And two, it doesn't do any cat things. It just is a cat, but its abilities have nothing related to the pun. It just shoots home in spikes. Like, that's kind of lame. What, why, do, why does the cat do home in spikes? It should have, like, a melee claw attack or something. So my cattail concept, I drew this, actually. I have it right over here. Uh, that'd be interesting. Programming nightmare, but... Uh, but my cattail, it looks like an actual cat. With the body of a cat, but it has a brown fur of the cattail plant. Its eyes are the fluff that's inside of the cattail. 
Howdy, howdy. Yeah, you're completely true. There are some underrated upgrades. Um, I do think blinders off should do a bit more, but it's not that bad. I think... What if it just had, like, 300 degree vision? Like, almost 360. But uh, my cattail concept... Still shoots spikes as a range attack, but it has a claw attack, it has a bunch of aquatic plant punts, and it has a mech called a lily pod, which is a pun. That's the thing making up for it. I put enough puns into this to make up for the fact that it is an old plant. And I have seen people make cattail character concepts that are a disgrace. And I have to make up for them. Armor probably knows what I'm talking about. I don't think a reviving garlic drone would be OP though, because you have five health in garlic drone. <laughs> It'd be super situational. Yeah, that's kind of overrated. It should do something else. It's like there had to be no zombies around for the reviving garlic drone to be useful, and. At that point, you can just kind of revive him yourself as Cactus. I think Mirage and Ice Fly might be worse than Home and P, but not. At least there's a set that exists where Rough Patch is useful. Revive Cap, well, uh, some versions of it will use Rough Patch just as filler. At least it belongs in a set. Yeah, pretty much. If they're dead pants, yeah. No, I, I think Symbiosis at least has a, maybe some slight niche. If you like Suicide Burrow, I can, a Suicide Burrow place style, you leave some Spike Weed behind. The Spike Weed from Symbiosis is weird in that it has more, like 100 health instead of like 10, which is interesting. Beatboxer, I would love that. He could beatbox and he could box people. Dude, that'd be pretty sick. And it's original. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we should probably work on another upgrade. <laughs> I mean, if you already have a suicide burrow in place, though, I guess, you know, it's fine. It's not a good upgrade, but it isn't completely useless. And it's like a two cost, so it's like you're not losing out on many points by using it. Burrow in the middle of an entire group, eat a zombie, get one free kill in exchange for your life, and leave behind a little gift. So, technically, you won the trade. <laughs> it's like these zeros, you win the trade. Overall, they are down a play. They're down a player, your team's down a player, and they have one spike weed. Wow. 
And you can throw a Grotty Goop down, too. And your other two Spike Weeds. So, you have overall more effects than the zombies gain from killing you at that situation. Uh, the Vamp Weed upgrade thingy is a bit interesting because I noticed it's not fully consistent without the Vamp Weed upgrade. Like, you don't always get healed from the Spike Weed. I don't know exactly how it was. That'd be kind of cool. What if it does its current effect? It could do the on kill thing too, and it like halves the cooldown for Spike Weed. Or something, I don't know. I think it being thrown is fine. Honestly, it means you can't cheese fights by placing it right in front of you. That's so stupid. You cheat uh, it allows you to do some cool things. And the thing with Spike Weed and BFN is, while it's not a very strong ability, there's literally no downside to using it. You don't even have to try. You just launch some Spike Weeds in the enemies. and Yeah, you have some Spike Weeds there. Nice. There's no downside to using it. It's just a bit of extra benefit. Yeah, it. it I'm uh, symbiosis is definitely bad. Yeah, uh, you know, you just spike weeds. The worst thing ever. Maybe. What if symbiosis made it so you had an extra charge of spike weed too? So three instead of two. And it just gave like what if it gave Spike Weed more health and gave it an extra charge and had the regular symbiosis of that. You're just a spike weed overlord. Okay, so that might be how it works. Symbiosis just makes a, uh, when you eat a zombie bro, at least it had a spike weed. And that spike weed, instead of having like 10 health, it has like 100. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a nicer place here. <laughs> the people here like to think a bit more. Fearless isn't that bad, because it works on a single enemy, too. It's nothing great, though, but it's not, like, horrible. Exactly. I also have a YouTube channel for BFN loadouts. You're looking at it right now. <laughs> well, it stacks with more people. It, it, is, it isn't great, but... It's not like completely useless. It it, it it can help out a little maybe. We will touch into the common upgrade. And basically all of them are getting buffed or changed to be more interesting and useful. There will be sets that actually use them. Speedy is not going to be a freaking 3 cost. It'll be like a 2 cost and it'll actually have universal use it. I, I noticed that it doesn't actually like buff space stations movement speed I think for some reason even though it's not sprinting Yeah, I oh see you later dude yeah, I don't think Fearless is awful. It's a bit situational in how often it'll actually make a difference. But, yeah. Well, it not buffing Max Speed isn't too good a deal because Max got Sprint, but that would also be fixed. It should just 
if you're not sprinting, you should move faster. That is how it will be. And it'll be a two cost. So you don't have to waste three costs on a very niche up upgrade. That's not going to make a difference most of the time. And with all the on kill effect upgrades, those are going to have some change. Critical blow. I want to find if there's a way to reward critical blow. I don't know if what I do, but maybe I will. Who knows? There's plenty of stuff we could do with it. Maybe just dealing critical damage alone will recharge abilities quicker. Yeah. Although I think the hold up, I have this up. So it heals 20% of your health. It doesn't give over health, apparently. Unlike Vampiric. I think it heals more than Vampiric as well. Critical Blow uh, is pretty decent on uh, melee characters because the melee attacks will always count as a critical vanquish. It's good with Juiced with Citron. Oh, uh, you probably would use like Best Defense plus Juice on Citron. It's a little cool gimmick set. Although, uh, Best Defense needs to be a bit better. I don't know why they made it a 3 cost. <laughs> 10 seconds isn't long enough for that tiny, tiny defense buff. That's cost three. True. Although, can't miss out already has a really short cooldown. God, why was this a four cost before? <laughs> This was a change that everybody forgot about it until I made that rollout video for the swarms. Eighties is really freaking good on console. He is. 80s is good on everything. I don't know why he'd only be good on PC. People can aim on console, you know? <laughs> We're not all bad at the game. Eighties is really strong on PC. I mean, on console. He's just a strong character. Now, keyboard and mouse is a little OP with, I'd say, because that's like easy mode with him. I think ready up, ready up should be like a one cost maybe. More one cost upgrades are better. <laughs> Full master's gonna hurt. Mm. It's getting a whole ass reward. It's like you kill you kill a nightcap, and now you get to kill the higher health characters for free. We still don't have coolant.
think this could be a one cost. More one cost upgrades in the area. Yeah, that's the problem though. It's a it's a kill horror thing and you just if you get lucky you'll kill somebody and then you can just pop up on the other players even if they're better than you. Cause you're teasing the fight with Bowmaster. And it's a cheesy upgrade. Something for coolant. Coolant right now is just like ammo upgrade with extra steps. Which I think is born. Yeah. There, there are too many noob 80s thinks Rocket Ride is like the best thing ever and it's like 80s is a top tier because of everything but like rocket ride <laughs> i remember watching a guy he did like some <clears throat> review on bfn after the final update and it was he said 80s is only good because of one ability and was, i cringed so hard you could tell he does he's not he either hardly played the game or he's just not good at it So that means Quake will be a one cost and Radiate will be a one cost. I don't think Huntsman is that great. It's it's a critical blow. I say it's probably generally better because that can just work that literally works on the like two damage arrows and the spread fire from the uncharged shot the benefit of huntsman over that is uh, it works with a splash of the fully charged shot I believe I definitely say I have bonus if you're really good also uh, huntsman 80s has too many four cost upgrades. Yeah, he's like Deadbeard, but like a bit closer. And a bit, they, his bolt helps with that. His kit missile doesn't work from too far away, so he's like a mid long range sniper. So, in between mid and long range. Ulcers, I don't think. I don't really have any problems with it. Uh, Citrons, yes. I'm gonna probably lower the fire rate on it. Oh, okay, cat. Uh, Citron's gonna get some instant changes. I'll probably reduce his health to like 400, maybe, or 500. Make it take like half a second longer to pull up so you can't use it in 1v1s as well to just wimp out. You can't regen while your shield is up, so you can't just hide behind it and regenerate. And it's going to be bigger, so it's better for protecting your teammates. I want him to focus on tanking. That obviously should be his main thing.
That's interesting. I mean, might as well just be upgrades, huh? You can have upgrades that are ability variants. I love making my own ideas for upgrades. It's fun. That'd be a really interesting concept. Thing is, shield, you're not gonna be using it up close or something. It's worthless up close. So being near enemies is not when you want to use a shield. You protect your teammates that are fighting a bit back and help them push. Uh, let's do a coolant. Would be something cool. Get, get it? That'd be interesting. Hmm. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. Grab onto it and fly around, that'd be fun. Support Chinook. And instead of having the bull barrage, it has like a support thing. Damn, everybody on the same mindset with Rotobega. Cool. Why didn't I think of cooldown? I'm so silly. It literally has cool in the name. I was thinking like something cool. And yeah, okay. Thank you, armor. Yeah. The only other upgrade it's, uh, the, the only other unique upgrade that Sa dragon has that affects cooldowns is ventilation you can stack them though Refreshes fast 1.5 times faster for four seconds. It shave off two seconds, right? No, it'd be if it's two times, so it'd be less than two seconds. Okay, hold on. Uh, this map is tricky. God, TJ up late. I got a triple kill with TJ Airplane, it's on my channel. Okay, math is hard. Don't mind me. Okay, so every two seconds, you save a second. Wait. 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm stupid. Don't worry about me. Uh. So, if it was 1.5 times for 6 seconds... You got... 3 seconds off of that? Yeah. Alrighty. Alright, so, yeah. If it was like this, every time you burn an enemy... You basically get a shave of 3 seconds. And it still does, it's a two cost still, and it still does the uh, uh, effect it currently has, which is reduce heat upon burning enemies. No, they should not have done that to DJ Uplink. <laughs> uh, that means if you use it with ventilation, <coughs> oh, my vote just died over there. If you use it with ventilation, you can get the ability refresh from ventilation and then burn somebody and you get your ability back real quick. That's why I made it 1.5 times for 6 seconds instead of making it like 2 times for like 4 seconds or something like that. Or for like 3 seconds because with the way that ability refresh stacking works when using multiple upgrades, it uh, might have been too powerful. Like, uh, let's see... Ventilation. Alright, it doesn't give us specifics. Uh... Oh, wrong thing. Oops. Uh, I'll just copy and pasta. stuff. So, ventilation, it doesn't give a specific two. Okay. Well, I know it's not huge right now. <laughs> ventilation and coolant would have similar uses, but different activation methods and different costs. So, overall, quite a bit different. That would be cool. I'm trying to get a thousand subs so I can, uh, because I think that's how many you need to make community posts on YouTube. Because then I could do stuff like that just on YouTube for all the all the people who watch me. And I could do polls and stuff. Because I think that'd just be fun. Yeah, if it was a sub, it'd be too small. Alright, well that's Snapdragon done. I don't know why I didn't make a cooldowns. It just was on the tip of my tongue, I suppose. So I want to make two of these slide upgrades a one cost. Well, we were working on these before, Cactus. Cactus is just... I kind of got that down just so if we have any ideas, we can work on those.
guys like my lobster? I like my lobster. I think he's rather handsome. Well, goodbye lobster. Oh. He's gone. No more lobster. 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 Um, okay, so chain lightning and jazz hands. I feel like jazz hands, it has hands on the name. She should be able to uh, make people catch them hands. So something melee would be cool. What if she just wait wait? Catch these jazz hands. I don't think it'd be busted. It's not busted on the swarm, so why would it be busted on slide? And it does less damage than the swarm ones. damage to be fair literally anything insta kills nightcap yes I know lobster is covering the screen you guys will look at lobster you guys will look at lobster and you will like it okay fine let me go stall again all right So you're setting three points on a melee attack that does 40 damage or 15 arc damage. It's nothing crazy powerful. It's it's swarm it's the swarm punch, but weaker. A killing nightcap is nothing unusual because everything kills nightcap. If the nightcap, you don't want to be at point blank range anyway, so it's a bad idea. Okay, Chain Lightning will be a one cost. I want to have another one cost. Why do I keep putting the freaking apostrophe? I'm stupid. Don't mind me. Do not mind me. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's so many diecat players that just die all the time. It's so sad. I mean, those are final. I really do prefer a completely original concept, though. The creativity is what I'm here for. And new puns being brought in. 
I'm I just love creativity. I am um, so much. Chain Lightning would be a bit better for like people who want to fight more at range. While Malfunction is the one cost upgrade that's good for up close. So you choose your one cost upgrade depending on if you want to be up close or from afar. Or you can run Refresh and Revive, which would help with like defibr defibrillated. And we're probably gonna make a few of the common upgrades one cost as well. And rough patch is getting changes. I am so good with nightcap. I'm absolutely crashed with nightcap. I was mass I for some reason I just massacre people with nightcap better than any other character. The reason I have a hundred hours on her. <laughs> She's so good, but you have to be so smart when playing her. You have to like know what you can and can't do. Know what everything that's going on. You have to play mind games. Don't let the enemy see you and know where you are. You get in a fight, you can reposition with uh Shadow Sneak, but into positions the enemies aren't going to expect. Whittle away their health a little by little until they die and they can't do anything. I don't even mind her larger hitbox nowadays. I, I just love the mind games of her. If you know what you're doing, she can be so good. And if you're struggling with survivability, you can just use like uh, Shadow Sling or like Clear Coating. Personally, I don't like using Clear Coating that much. Shadow Sling is really good, but honestly, I like using Parkour because that just gives me a lot of mobility in Shadow Sling. Party, parkour Speedy. Honestly, I thought that, that set was more fun, if anything, but honestly, I've been using it in multiplayer, and it's just so good. You just instantly reposition across the map, which lets you do so many things in fights. I also want to do Parkour plus Shadow Tribute. Yeah, pretty much. That, that, is, that is one thing to do with Nightcap. If you just keep hitting them once, though, they'll never start their regen. Parkour is a controversial upgrade. Some people think it's fine. Some people think it's garbage. It used to be broken. Yeah, you know one guy that think it, thought it wasn't broken, but uh, <laughs> he's wrong. Uh, I think parkour is fine, but I think it should have a secondary effect to make it cooler. Hey, we finished slide too. Nice. So we finished slide and uh, Snapdragon a day finally. And we have a bit of a start to cactus. We've been shooting for like two and a half hours now. Might wrap it up sometime soonish, but I'll keep going. I feel like it. So Mirage should be something with her scope. I think one of these upgrades need a, at least one upgrade should do something with her spike strike. Something needs to be like a one cost. We already have one or one cost upgrade for her, but I want a second one. I think every character having like two one cost upgrades is a nice thing. Yeah, Chase Cadet doesn't do a whole lot of damage. She's not bad. I think she's a bit underrated, but she isn't like amazing at all. 
I like Space Station though. Space Station is very strong. A uh, loaded Space Station dies so easily, but if you play your cards out, you're very coordinated and don't bite off more than you can chew. You can do so much damage. It's just you get chipped away at so easily by like nightcaps and acorns and stuff. Makes it very dangerous. Well, I want like one class to take your shot crates, but <laughs> right back. Hohoman is just, it takes a second to lock on to people. It doesn't lock on immediately. It should just not exist. I'm gonna be real. When we get to Rose and uh, Space Cadet, we're gonna remove their Hohoman. Hohoman's a stupid concept. The only times I'm fine with Hohoman is like, Wizard and Coaster because it's so hard to aim on top of somebody's head because you can't predict your allies movements and like uh, Abilities and uh, Passenger space can I can keep going But we're gonna Yeah, <laughs> rough patch is really just filler the ultimate filler Homan's gonna be removed, but we're gonna buff the characters weapons to compensate of course We're not just gonna take Homan's like all right suffer now no. Homan's a dumb concept. You'll get bullied for playing a Homan character because it's got a Homan. Oh my god, it takes no skill. But it's also like the Homan is complete garbage. It's only good at specific ranges. It's inconsistent. Removes a skill cap, so you can't do a whole lot. You're just kind of praying that the Homan does something. And they have to take a lot of damage off the character to make up for the Homan too. So yeah, we're gonna get rid of Homan on base space cadet without... Uh, the passenger cadet can keep it. And Rose. We'll get rid of her homie. I, I still don't think Rough Patch is the worst upgrade in the game. Because at least it's a one cost. So. Every upgrade has a downside. And that is the points it uses up. See. The upside of Rough Patch is very... Minimal to the point where it barely exists, but its downside is also extremely minimal. You lose that on one point now Home in P its upside is slightly less minimal, I guess, but it's very minimal and its downside is Massive one of the biggest downsides in the game of any upgrade you waste four points on that You got to consider the downside So it's a 30% level of price. Well, 
Thing is, what if you are... There is sets that do use Rough Patch. Uh, Revive Cap. Because it has to run Refresh and Revive in that set. Oh, you don't have to, but it's really... I prefer to run Refresh and Revive. I use Clear Code and Incubate and Refresh and Revive. And you have one point left over and your only other choice is Rough Patch. There is no set in the game that uses Home and Beat. And you should never use Home and P over Combat Adrenaline. Hell, I'd rather run a two-cost upgrade, any of like his two-cost upgrades for four-cost over Home and P. I'd rather use a four-cost Refresh and Revive than Home and P. Like, at least you're not losing much when you're running drop packs. And sometimes there's no downside to using it in like Revive Cap at all. Home and P are always at a disadvantage when using it. Because you can be running good upgrades. Sometimes with Fuck Patch, you don't got another choice. No, Easterchon's not actually that bad. Home and P is bad. Easterchon's really underrated because he's hard to play. Easterchon actually is, can be pretty good in the right hand. It's just people try to snipe with him because they're dumb. I have seen him do good though. He's definitely not the worst character in GWG. I'd say he's like solidly mid tier. His fall off is harsh, but. Besides for that, he, up close, he's pretty dang strong. If you don't use your uncharged shots, you use, use second charge shot. So, longevity drug. This is kind of like the energizer, but for, like, uh, energizer for mech, but for garlic drum. Yeah, Toxie might be bottom then. I think Commander P is underrated, but problem is Agent P exists. Literally, Agent P on all body shots does, like, the same DPS as Commando P. And Commando P has harsh fall off and is less accurate with solo projectiles. I'd say Commando might be better than that. Fire, I'd say it's better than Toxic P. It's, it's, you don't have a big splash, but you have fire damage instead of the Warfus Toxic damage. Fire damage is actually good. Agent P on all body shots does the most DPS out of all the P shooters, except Plasma P. Literally on all body shots. And he does double on headshots. It's so stupid. Such a broken character. Honestly, at the end of the day, you're a P sure. If you're a P sure, you're not gonna be bad because you're a fucking P sure. <laughs> you got the hyper, you got beam bomb, you got Gatling. I don't mind Commando P article personally. Maybe some people do. I, I like playing Commando P article because he's good. And I'm good with him. And he's fun.
Hell, you don't even really need dark beam bombs. You can just freeze and shoot people. Icy is really good because he can help his team against like brains and max. Like it's a piece that can fight brains well, which is the nice thing. Top. We all. We, I don't even have to say who the top four piece are. We call them the four horsemen of the apocalypse because there are four piece who are stupid broken. AGP, Law P, Pass P, and EP. Those are all incredibly stupidly broken characters for some reason. And everybody means them. I don't know how to reward pop one. I already know it's not going to be a four cost anymore. I don't want to have an on kill effect though. good. I don't think it'd be too strong. You're gonna need that extra bulk if you're playing close range with Cactus. Anyways, you have a 100 health character. And your melee weapon as a sniper. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like my sensitivity, I don't know. It's not that high though. I don't have the energy to use high sensitivity. Like if I gotta play this game constantly to make loadout videos and stuff, I'm not using high sensitivity. That's too much effort. Plus, I have to. I play GW2 competitively, and trans. Like going between each game. Is difficult because the aim in each game is different so I use lower sensitivity and BFM just to make that transition between GW2 and BFM easier because my sensitivity in GW2 is higher because I play competitively and higher sensitivity is way better than lower sensitivity it is such a huge advantage true see I got shaky hands and I put too much when like I noticed that like when I'm drawing and stuff I press down with my pencil so hard I'm not good with that kind of precision no I don't use aim assist it fucks up my aim too much Ugh. it's it's too much of a disadvantage to use it it's like 
yeah, it puts your cursor on the enemy, so your shots are lagging behind them. Because, you know, no care, like, there's no hit scan characters in this game. You have to lead your shots. You have to put your cursor ahead of the enemy. And if it puts it on them, that's not what you want it. And I play Painter and Mystic Flower in GW2, who have pretty slow projectiles. Using aim assist on those guys is a death wish. <laughs> Especially if I want to hit like mid airs on really fast targets. I, I have to place my pr cursor ahead of the enemy to predict where they're going to be. Because with those two characters, I had to hit mid airs a lot in competitive. With Mystic Flower, it's dealing with brains jumping around towards you. I gotta hit a mid air. And Painter, I shoot peas and coins out of the air when they're husk hopping or hyper. I am actually working on a GW2 video for once that I'm going to put a pretty good bit of effort in. It's a montage of Painter. Me playing Painter. It's going to be like mostly midder shots with him and stuff like that. Because that's pretty cool. It's, it especially feels good when you're against Agent P. Because you're playing Painter who has 48 DPS and Agent P has over triple that. <laughs> At like 150 something. Pogo EP. De de definitely Pogo EP. See, EP is insanely broken and uncount. There's no actual counter. There's like, you can kind of check him sometimes. So there's no perfect counter. Brainium with Typhoon isn't actually hard to counter depending on the character. Hell, I can 1v1 Brainiums with Sunflower. It, it's... Brainium Typhoon is more toxic and more of a noob killer than anything. It's easy to... It's, it's not super hard to kick their ass. They're so OP, though. Yeah, ne ne never EP, please. <laughs> It's a very bad thing to do. Pressure point drop. That's another one cost upgrade down. I think I'll make buttered branches a one cost as well. I don't think it really needs to be a two cost. Personally, I don't think uh, it being one cost is going to make buttered branches OP. I don't really care. I mean, I don't... I play competitive GW2, so I expect my enemies to play optimally, which is Pogo. The, when you're playing competitive, people aren't gonna sit there and let you get free shots on them out of, like, oh yeah, it's respectful or something. I don't expect my enemies to sit still and let me beat them up. In competitive, you do everything in your power to win, no matter what it is, as long as it isn't cheated. So, I'm used to it. I'm used to playing Sunflower, who gets targeted hard by the brains. They're on you the entire match and you die constantly to them. And dealing with pogo party brains constantly on it. I actually have seen Armor Chomper in competitive because in Sita time, he is a good defensive character. An Armor Chomper on point is so hard to push because he has so much health and he hits so hard. And when scientists are trying to push point, they can't do a whole lot. Armor Trumper actually has competitive usage. <laughs> Twilight does. Hot Rod does. Hot Rod does as like a second Twilight, basically. Because you can only run one Twilight because of the rules we use. Fire Trumper does because uh, trigger spam with him. He's really good on C uh, time part uh, Gnome Bomb. And... Uh, 
Yeti Chomper is decent in like turn for supporting people because at the end of the day, Chomper has an insta kill and a goop and spike weed. He can protect his teammates from the brains and counter them. He can goop people to make people free kills because goop is like super overpowered and has like a seven second cooldown. And you got spike weed to control areas and just piss off people. Place it on a point, it's gonna screw people over. And placing it on point on defense is the most annoying thing ever because zombies don't have butter. Barrage and Beam Bomb to take out Spike Weed for them easily. Yeah, Twilight is a, obviously the best chomper, not even a competition, but uh, I've never had a problem with Brainium plus Reach because they can't hit me. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there isn't like competitive in BFN. I have had an idea for 2v2 Battle Arena, but the problem is when you're doing private play, it won't let you take off the EAM. It lets you take off the AR in any mode except Battle Arena for some reason. And you have to play like all on the same team or something. It's dumb. But we have considered doing competitive Team Vanquish in BFN. Uh, the only problem with that though is BFN actually isn't dead enough to do competitive. Even like in GW2 we can do competitive because the game is pretty dead. Because we need to find an empty lobby with zero randoms in it. We go to like Asian lobbies and we can find lobbies without randoms in there, there. But in BFN, even Asian lobbies have players. And they're like full. So that's the big reason we can't do competitive BFN yet. It isn't, it isn't dead enough. <laughs> Popcorn, pressure point, calibrated. Yeah, uh, apparently. <laughs> it's surprising, but apparently it is. The only active lobbies in GW2 are like East, West, in Europe sometimes. Even though they're not often that they're gonna be completely full lobbies. Sometimes they are if you're lucky. If I could play like all day and have full lobbies. Yeah, same here. Now popcorn pressure point and calibrator are gonna be pretty tricky upgrades to because I'm going for full week. We works here. Calibrated as a stupid uh, DPS whore meta thingy. It's just for people who want tons of DPS, and I don't like that. So we're in, we're reworking that. Pressure point is a hyper situational upgrade. I have died to pressure point before in an online match. It was hilarious, but I died from the explosion. Uh. And popcorn, it's RNG and it's an on kill effect. And it doesn't affect your play style. It's just like an added bonus to kills. And it's a four cost. So, that's gonna get some healthy changes. These are ones I might have to think about overnight. Whoa! So I got, we're not gonna start on dead beer today. It's too late. We've been streaming for almost three hours. I haven't done to explode down yet. That'd be pretty funny though, I think. I think I'll think on these V upgrades overnight. I think I'm about to wrap up this shit. Wait. Well, uh, there are ban lists. There's certain characters that are banned, like 
Obviously, Dedos are banned. Rody Z is banned. Lapian Z7. I wish Agent P was banned, but he's limited to one at least. Plasma P is limited to one. Party Brains are limited to one. And there's two different communities actually. They each have different rules. Like in one community, in both communities, you can only have three of each characters with certain exceptions. Like in both communities, you can only have two roses, two brains, and two of each sniper. And, uh,. But in uh, the second community, you can also only have two Citrons, so I actually kind of like that rule. Because it lets you have a- normally in like turf attack, you always run like triple P, triple corn, triple Citron. But only having two Citrons is you get to run a bit more variety in what your extra characters want. You want to run at least one Sunflower in a Rose. And then you have- you can run like a Cactus, a Torchwood, a Twilight. I've seen like- there's this is one Twilight player named Artemis. Nastiest Twilight player I've ever seen. I don't know what he does, but you wouldn't think there would be like a best Twilight player. But he is. I've never seen somebody pop off as hard as he does. He makes himself more of a threat than the agent piece are. We're just struggling the whole game to just keep an eye on him and not all die miserably. Hey. It's so cool. I love fighting against him because of that. It's, it's impressive. He used to be on our team. Okay, cat. If you say so. I'm gonna go out. Competitive school. I do have some streams of it, although I think they're uh, private. I am the only painter player in competitive history. <laughs> when you when people play engineer, they run like sanitation or mechanic usually, and sometimes you see like electrician because of his gigantic splash. I play painter. Sometimes I'll switch to a different engineer depending on the situation, of course. I gotta be. I'm like our most flexible player. I play every day. I don't like ever play corner soldier, but. I can I can play them in comp because they're like piss easy characters. <laughs> and I'll do good with them. Cats mm. appears limited to one. So every team has a plasma P and an agent P and a party brains. And two brains, pretty much. The only time you won't see two brains in a match is like seeds of time. Well, you don't really play bottom tiers in this. But, I wouldn't even say Painter's a bottom tier. He, he is a bit on the weak side, 48 DPS, but the fact that he does 48 damage on one shot is what makes him strong. You can just so quickly do like almost 100 damage to someone. You can like, hey, team, I did 96 damage to this guy, finish him off. Oh, I did 48. And that's what makes him good. I have played Commando P in this once. Nobody plays Commando P. But on like Time Park, No Bomb, it's such a close range map that Commando P is something you can get away with. Hmm. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap it up for today. We've been streaming for 3 hours, 1 minute, and 11 seconds. Uh, watch my videos. I have the tips and tricks videos, and a lot of videos should give you a lot of advice that will help you out with BFN. That's kind of what the whole reason I make these videos. They are designed to help people and help people have more fun. I just want to make people happy with these videos and improve people's experience with BFN. I want people to like the game because it's my favorite game. So that's why I do all this stuff. Anyway, so fun stream today. We got a lot done. We're almost done with Cactus. Three upgrades after we finish these two characters. We had a lot of fun conversations. A lot of thoughts are being bounced around. But that's enough for today. My mouth is starting to hurt. <laughs> this is an hour longer than the previous stream. So we got a lot done. 
Anyway, 